I'm okay at last, but I don't know what that can erase all the past and the pettiness. Oh, reflection of the emptiness. Hilarious, you think you're worth my time, you're delirious. Mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior. Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior. Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag. I want you to hear words, you can say them back. I want you to feel free from the chains at last. And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a constant vaccine driver But mom's a little stressed about spending Remember, deep breaths And watch your speed Even though we're watching our wallets Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety So it's right here during our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet, too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tire. From Glacier Peak High School, it's time for STSPN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Casey Bryant. With me tonight is Coach Dylan Hummel and Todd Elvig for tonight's coverage of the Glacier Peak High School Grizzlies taking on the Bothell High School Cougars. It is playoff action as the Bothell High School Cougars will be running from left to right on your screen wearing a Royal blue pennies with white trim as the Grizzlies will be in their home whites with navy blue. Coach, in the days leading up to a playoff matchup, what is that anticipation, what is that excitement like for someone like you who's in that locker room? Well, I think a lot of it just stems from the preparation that you do at practice. If you take care of the stuff you do at practice and you practice at a game speed, then everything, everything you're preparing for here just becomes second nature. Bothell has got possession of the ball right now. An errant pass is bouncing out towards midfield. It will be scooped up by Glacier Peak. We'll get a whistle and a stoppage in play. Over and back. As the Grizzlies will be able to advance as racing up the right side of the field, cradling, sending it down to the far side doorstep. Leading the charge there is the sophomore Torben Agard. He gets it around behind the net. Holding now Kyler Jensen, the junior attack, attackman who leads the team in assists. The offense flows so heavily through him. You see them playing the perimeter right now. Hopping behind the net once more, Jensen hangs on. It looks like Bothell's opening up in his zone here, uh, which which bodes well for their, their strengths. Their keeper in net, Bryce, is a really good goal, goaltender and, and a really good ball stopper. So to put a zone out in front, the defense is trying to take those outside shots just like that one as Aiden Moore pounds <laughs> that one in the back of the net. And on cue, an early test there for Bryce McAuliffe, the goaltender, and that one is wired home by the senior, Aiden Moore. Moore has scored now in seven of 11 appearances this season. He gets the Grizzlies on the board first. Yeah, yeah as the uh, lone left-handed player on this uh, GP offense, uh, he, he really dominates that shooting wing over there, and that's his sweet spot right there. I've seen him hit that dozens of times. And Moore is someone who has been heating up for them for sure. Back on May 3rd last week, he had a pair of goals against Lake Stevens. It was his first multi-goal game of the season. And now the Glacier Peak Grizzlies are right where they want to be on home field. They've got themselves an early advantage, a minute and a half into play. And they've got possession of the ball. Is up the right side, Pierce Steele. The midfielder, Junior, sends it over to the far corner and back to work. 
Come the Grizzlies. McAuliffe is the starting goaltender for Bottle. He comes into the game with a 9-6-0 record, a 7.2 goals against average, and a 6.63 save percentage. And you mentioned the quality of his work this season, Coach, and we were speaking off air about how the art of being a goaltender in lacrosse is often having to cope with failure. A 6.63 save percentage, quite good for this level. Yeah, anything over 50%, you really can't uh – you can't complain about as a coach. You're really looking for anything over 50% for the numbers he's putting up. I mean, it's the reason that Bothell's in a playoff game right now. And the Grizzlies are working the ball pretty quickly as they get it out to an open space, a low to high shot. That's fought off by McAuliffe, a nice shoulder save. Possession now to Bothell High School as the Cougars will go to work. The Cougars had the opening shift of the game in their possession. Now they'll go to work playing from behind as there's an airborne pass fielded at center and carried up the field by Nikolai Davis, the senior. Davis hunting for his first point of the season, went 14 games of the regular campaign without one. It is now Ben Aragon, the sophomore. Looking to his right, there's the skilled goal scorer, Bryce Johnson. Johnson is one of the most talented players in this division. He sends it around behind the goal line and Tate Rayner Maintains possession with a defender in front of him. Hops out to the near side post. He takes a heavy check to the stick. A loose ball is scooped up by Johnson. Fighting his way through a sea of defenders. It's picked up by the Grizzlies. Four on three. Here we go. Got a draw and dump here. A Slides rush early. up field to his left. Over is Jensen. Gets it to the doorstep. Down low. A shot. Oh. Fought off by McAuliffe. Oh. As I believe that might have hit out the outside of the net. Uh, Bothell got away with one there. He had Torben on the backside. He had a one-on-two on, one on two there, and you want to see the GP attackman uh, get to the front of the cage there and improve that angle. It was Austin Bloom that took that shot. Bloom does lead the Grizzlies in goals, as it is Johnson now. The Cougars leading goal scorer. Johnson this season with 42, racing in, surrounded by defenders. It seems pretty clear at this point. Oh, nice <laughs> What a play. Seems pretty clear at this point that the plan of attack is to go right at Johnson and challenge him physically. Here we go, round two. Up the other way, here's Bloom, he shanks it high. Austin Bloom, the junior, missing the mark, not by much. Yeah, and you can see that Bryce Johnson's a little, he's a little antsy. Every time we've gotten the ball on offense, the substitutions haven't even gotten on before Bryce is now uh, pushed into a double team on back-to-back -back possessions. Kyler Jensen works it out to about the 30-yard line on your screen as DJ Votesberger, the senior, cuts over to his left. Votesberger finds the skilled goal scorer, Bloom. Goals in 11 of 15 games in the regular season. Working around behind the cage, held on to by Johnson, or Jensen. Jensen, out in front, a shot, a save made by McAuliffe. He caught that one, it looked like just a little bit with the netting. That's where he shows his skill set right there on the doorstep. I mean, that's that's why he's over 50% because he's making saves like that. Opposite McAuliffe the other way, having not faced a shot quite yet, is Adam Troxel. Troxel only played in six of the 16 contests. He was 4-2 and two this year with an 8-18 goals against average, but hold that thought as back to work go the Grizzlies. Cradling the ball very close to his shoulder as he carries it up is Aiden Moore, the goal scorer so far. Under seven minutes to play here in the first quarter as Mason Wheeler holds on. Wheeler to his left, Bloom around behind, stepping forward, Jensen evades a defender. Now cuts in deep. There's another shot that's fought off by McAuliffe. McAuliffe racking up saves here after an early blemish. They really need this clear here. GP's had a great zone ride here. And uh, Bothell finally looks like they might be able to break it if they can get the ball into the box and avoid a failure to advance. Dylan Kynaston trying to get it upfield, and that'll be a whistle and a stop. And a timeout will be called, and we'll take a quick break. It is 1-0 Glacier Peak, 6.22 remaining in the first quarter. You're watching STSPN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire.
Stewart Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniels the best and one of the most recognized do-it-best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniels and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniels. Back inside the stadium at Glacier Peak High School for STSPN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports presented by Les Schwab Tire. It is 1-0 Glacier Peak Grizzlies, a timeout called by Jacob Cartwright and the Bothell High School Cougars as they are playing from behind. Shaking and baking his way up the field is Dylan Kynaston as he works his way over to the left. We were talking in between action there, Coach Hummel, as Bryce Johnson, a 42-goal scorer this season for Bothell, uninvolved to this point in the offense. What would you like to see to get him involved? Well, he's got Roman Foster on him, so it's, he's got a tough matchup. But if you're Bothell and you're looking at the guys that you've got, you've got six guys to pick from. I'd pick from the guy with 42 goals to uh, put myself <laughs> into a situation where we might be able to put one on the board and even this out. You see Caden Bramer with possession of the ball as he's trying to carve his way through the defense. He gets it around behind the goal line. Johnson is lurking. Out at about the 20-yard line of your screen wearing the number 66 as there's a nifty move to get around a defender by Dylan Kynaston. Only a freshman, but very confident in handling the ball. Now they find Johnson, who steps forward, has a defender draped all over him in Foster, one of the captains of the Glacier Peak High School Grizzlies. It is Johnson on the prowl, stepping forward with a lane. He is sandwiched by defenders, completely out of options as he is forced off the ball with five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Excellent defensive play there. Yeah, they got nobody cutting through for him, so it's easy to hedge off on those on those adjacent offensive players. The, you need those guys to kind of get some space for the Dodgers so that those doubles don't happen so quickly. Kind of give him some space to work his matchup a little bit. Right there, I mean, you got three on one. It is clinical execution, though. You're luring him into that soft area thinking that he's got a lane and completely entrapping him. GP's great and, and, and disciplined on defense. You see Johnson taking a few hardy shoves oh, there as now we've got some extracurriculars. Yep, there's the laundry. <laughs> and there will be some flags as he was coming together with Pierce Steele, the junior of Glacier Peak High School. And Pierce Steele, I tell you what, one of the best ground ball getters in this conference, 56 this season, and one of the top defensive midfielders. And going right at Johnson. Yeah, he's a guy that uh, likes to put his foot on the gas pedal. He likes to play at 100 miles per hour and, and helps in those ground ball situations. He's a really good athlete. When you look at teams that can win a game on the ground like that, you look at someone like Steele, but you also look at Caden Brammer on the other side of the ball and Bothell. 172 ground balls, that's the most I've seen of any player in this conference. Yeah, and, and only a freshman too. The one thing that sticks out to me outside of just the ground balls is uh, he also has 24 points. He's got 16 goals and 8 assists. So mm -hmm. he, he is a, they have traditional face-off get-offs, and he's a guy that can stay on in transition and, and play offense as well. Puts him that dual threat. And he'll have to go to work here as Glacier Peak on the attack. 440 remaining in the first quarter. They've got one. They're hunting for a 2-0 lead. Around behind the cage is set up in oh, front point yep. blank. They score. With the quick release, it is Austin Bloom over his shoulder. And Bloom has found the back of the net after his fourth attempt to do so. It is 2-0 Glacier Peak. Yeah, he just is a goal machine. He finds he finds gaps in the crease area, and, and he's a really good finisher on the crease. And you see one right there. Good heads-up play from the ex-attackman and, uh, and a quick stick inside. Easy goal. You look at how Bloom performed this season. He led the team with 28 goals in 15 appearances this regular season. Glacier Peak now leading 2-0 on their home field with four and a half remaining in the first quarter. They take advantage of the open space down low. We got a tie up on the face off. Hold on now, GP. And so it will be Bothell possession. Here comes Brammer, the freshman, yep. with two Grizzlies right in front of him. He's got an option to his left, and Ben Aragon looks him off. He's got to get in the box here. He's going to get a failure. Might get a ward there. Step forward, and he gets around a defender. So an opportunity now for Bothell as they work their way out of danger. 
got to be careful. He's got to keep two hands on his stick there. He's, he's in jeopardy of getting some word calls, and I think that might be what his coach is going to say to him as he comes off the field here. They really need this possession and, and to kill this ball behind X. And their man down here. As Aragon steps forward, the man down takes a huge shove from behind, gets right back up to his feet. And heavy hitting. You can see the physicality really starting to ramp up as soon as they start to get past into the box area, really anywhere, any steps towards the cage, Glacier Peak is taking the body. Yeah, they're a very physical team and, and very athletic, so they, they like to slide quick. They like to be physical anytime that the uh, the Dodger gets inside the crease area. They'll send multiple bodies. Botha really needs to look to dump and move the ball a little bit. Otherwise, GP is going to be able to slide and create some turnovers. Now here comes Ben Aragon stepping forward. A bounce pass around behind the cage. A set up in front just out of reach. Settled by Kynaston. Gets it down low onto the goal line. Scooped up. And the first recorded save of the game for Adam Troxel. As in transition, there's a... Nice long reach there by Johnson, knocking the ball out of the netting of Roman Foster. It bounces into the bottle half of things. They step forward towards midfield. Another stick check there. You see Roman Foster flailing that stick, trying desperately to get it out of the hands of Reed Morgan, one of the captains of Bothell. Yeah, I think one thing you see there is you see Bryce Johnson is, is the best offensive player, but you see him creating opportunities on the ride there for second possessions. He was the uh, he was the catalyst behind the second possession here, and you see him here at X. Tate Rayner, Bryce Johnson on the attack. It is Johnson over to the far side for Caden Brammer. Johnson is lurking over at that far side post, keeping an eye on him. Brammer this season, two hat tricks to his name, four multi-goal outings, so very capable of putting the ball in the back of the net if need be. He's got a defender spotting up right in front of him in the form of Captain Ben Cordero, wearing the number 31 tonight instead of his usual 33. Around behind the goal line. With a defender in front, searching for space is Henry Daly. And Aaron Pass is scooped up by Glacier Peak and guided forth by oh, Caleb Eckerlin. Three on two. And up, front. up in front, here comes Bloom across the way. A bounce shot fought off by McAuliffe. A three on one as it came down towards the netminder. And Torbun was able to catch that and get that shot off despite that being deflected by that lone defender. He was able to adjust mid, that ball mid flight. He's able to catch that, get that off. And Bryce doing his thing in the goal again. He's found a rhythm here in the first. Now, as a coach, you look at the way that these two offenses have been able to situate themselves with a minute 45 remaining in the first quarter. Glacier Peak, it's not the first odd man rush that they've had down the field while Bothell is clawing tooth and nail to try to get a look towards the net. Is that worrisome if you're from the Bothell half of things? Yeah, I think a lot of, I mean, if you're giving up multiple transition opportunities early, those are easy goals for Glacier Peak. And as athletic as they are, they're going to get more transition opportunities as this game goes on. I think Bothell needs to try to hold back and drop in before they decide to slide upfield. You see on that last transition, that deep hole slid upfield with the offensive player at the 45, 40 yard line. Nobody's going to score from 40 yards away. Mm -hmm. So they kind of got to bring it in and then go out. Otherwise, they're, you're going to see those two on one, three on ones that Glacier Peaks had several of so far. Now you see Bryce McAuliffe quarterbacking the offense from his own half of things. They get it quickly up the field. Here's an opportunity for Bothell, a backdoor pass, and a save made by Troxel. A dandy, his finest of the quarter. Quick passing after it was initially the DJ Waltzberger errant shot that led to the possession for Bothell. And how about that pass from the netminder getting it upfield? Yeah, I mean, you see him with a short stick out there playing D midi. You see him in the cage. You see him on the football field. He is a do-it-all player. As a flag is thrown, so we'll have a delayed penalty coming up in a moment. Stepping up is. with possession is Tanner Johnson, and we'll get the whistle and the stop. The slash call. GP is going to go man up. Slashing is, in fact, the infraction. 31.8 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. A 2-0 Glacier Peak lead and an opportunity for more as another penalty taken by Bothell. As they set up their offense, as you look behind the end line, Kyler Jensen is out there with DJ Votesberger. With possession of the ball at the 30, stepping forward is Mason Wheeler. 
Wheeler, no stranger to goal scoring himself, six hat tricks this season. His best performance came back on April 14th, a four goal outing with three assists to boot and a win versus Shorecrest. And it looks like he's just killing off the clock. Yeah, if uh, if there's somebody in the penalty box, whoever has possession of the ball when at the end of a quarter will maintain possession at the start and there will be no face off. So as long as they hold the ball here, they'll start with possession at the start of the second quarter. And exactly right, the Glacier Peak Grizzlies with an excellent start. A 2-0 lead at the end of the first quarter. If you're Bothell, you look at it, you say not too many looks towards the net, but at the very least, the game is still very much within arm's grasp. Yeah, I think right now uh, Bryce has found himself a groove in the net. Uh, if they can limit some transition opportunities and value the ball a little bit more on offense, uh, they can double the amount of opportunities and maybe find the back of the net. Before we head to break, STSPN would like to thank all of our broadcast sponsors. A special thanks to Fred's Rivertown Ale House, McDaniel's Do It Best, American Family Insurance, GNS Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, Adrenaline Fundraising, Gene Johnson Plumbing, the U.S. Navy, U.S. Marines, and U.S. Army, and a special thanks to the Washington State Lacrosse Boys and Girls for their support. We'll take a quick timeout. It is 2-0 Glacier Peak at the end of one. You're listening to STSPN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from the guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. This is Witch Doctor requesting immediate hot extract. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood and it's a, it's a real brotherhood and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood and that, that's what matters. Welcome back inside Glacier Peak High School Stadium. Casey Bryant alongside Coach Dylan Hummel as well as Todd Elvig in the booth as the Glacier Peak Grizzlies have a 2-0 advantage and possession of the ball to start the second quarter. Understand, in between quarters, we had a few penalty infractions, Coach. Yeah, there looked to be a stick violation on both teams. Not sure if it's too much hold in the stick and the ball didn't come out or if it's too pinched or if the pocket's too deep. But either way, both teams are going to have an unreleasable penalty for the next two minutes, and we're playing five on four here for GP. Aiden Moore with the shot there for Glacier Peak. That was fought off by McAuliffe. Moore's got it right back. Another shot that gets flung over the netting. And Moore has been a trigger man for Glacier Peak to this point. His shot missing the net by quite a wide margin, and now you've got Bothell with possession. And it is McAuliffe again leading the charge. A long flick down the length of the field. Reaching for it are the Cougars. It is banked back up, and here comes Kyler Jensen with speed. And we are five on five here, so interested to see what Bothell will do with five guys when they've been running a zone to this point. It is Austin Bloom with quite a bit of space, as it looks like Glacier Peak going for a change, setting up their offense. It is Bloom riding a nine-game goal-scoring streak into the playoffs, and he scored the game's second to give the Grizzlies a 2-0 lead. Stepping forward is Jensen at the near side post. Denied by McAuliffe. You really wish you see Jensen throw a fake right there instead of just throwing it right into the goalie's stick. That's a tough one, he's gonna want that one back. A heavy two-hander thrown by Bloom. He'll stare daggers at the official as a, f a flag gets thrown. 
It will be Bloom scooping it up, and he will be whistled. Gonna have a hold here. He wrapped him all the way up as he was crossing midfield. Yep. See what Bothell can do man up. It would really be nice for them to be able to knock one in here, give him some confidence. At the very least, you want to be able to see momentum start to shift in this one. They've been playing on their heels so much, and now this gives a lot of open space to some of their dynamic players up front. Yeah, this is going to be a big opportunity when if you can get a man up goal here, that could shift the momentum quite a bit. Lacrosse is a game of runs, so I think Bothell is really looking to try to create one here. It looks like Johnson will start with possession of the ball as they have Cooper Pierce and Tate Rayner spotting up right by the doorstep. It is Johnson stepping forward. Two men down. Two men down. Uh, that's right, because of the stick infraction. Would have been in maybe, oh, yep, yep. As there's a shot that's denied there by Troxel, a nice save going down onto one knee. Keep your eye on 15 here. He's got nine goals on the season, senior captain. Uh, nine goals, one assist. Uh, I saw him come over them. Here he is. There it is. And there's the shot calling it. Peter Cecil with the goal for Bothell. And they answer back. It is 2-1 to one with 9.59 remaining in the second. Goalies hate to see shots from defenders. The long pole is a little bit longer than the short sticks, and uh, the release point is, is a little bit different. So goalies hate to see that, especially somebody like Troxler, who's a hybrid player between uh, midfielder and, and goalie here with Vitali out with an injury. Now, for a defender to have that kind of goal-scoring touch, that's such a huge benefit for any club. Absolutely. Anytime you have a defender that can help out in transition or in man up in this situation, the versatility is huge. So two minutes gone by here in the second quarter, and Bothell has gotten a much-needed stopper goal. And they have possession and a chance for more as Caden Brammer hangs on to things. He's had a good game so far. I think that's some somewhere where Bothell can, uh, can look to kind of build their success on off the faceoff. GP can look to create some turnovers with Bothell, Bothell subbing two players at once here. They're, they're doubling. Brammer is being worn like a sweater by Caleb Eckerlin as he's gotten them all around him. He steps forward, takes a shot, and that rises just past the netting. Confident move there by Brammer getting out in front of the net. Bouncing ball over in the far corner. Who wants it? Taking a hack at it as it sits down on the grass. Still vying for it as we get some heavy pushing and shoving. It finally trickles out along the sideline, reaching for it as Cordero. Got a fast break going the other way here. If he can get it out, here we go. And here comes Connor McCauley. Through midfield, he's got options all the way down. He looks over to his left, finds Jensen. He loses it in the sun. That's something to think about here on these fast breaks for GP. Throwing it to that right-handed side is going to be tough with that sun right in their eyes. You know, we were admiring the vista just before we went on air, how beautiful it is with the pines and the mountains in the background. However, there is the flip side of that coin of it's going to be real tough to track those airborne passes. There are a few places uh, in Washington State where you can play a lacrosse game with this backdrop. That's very true. Very true. I tell you what, it's I and I, I'll make the same comparison I did before we even went on air. It's a lot like the University of Washington, where this is an easy selling point. You want to play here, this is what you're going to get. Absolutely. And Rex Road's done a great job. They've got he healthy numbers at the varsity and the JV level, so he's he's doing a good job selling it for sure. He's gotten a lot of great players, great athletes. Michael Rexrode, the head coach of the Grizzlies. He led them to an 11-4-0 record overall, 6-0 in league play. There's a flag down on the field, so we'll have a delayed penalty coming up against Glacier Peak. There is an option over it. Wrapped up, taking a few hearty shoves from Cordero, still finding his way down towards the turf. Forced down by a heavy hit was Cooper Pierce. But it looks like Cougars will have an opportunity to even things up while man up. Got a cross check down in the corner and another man up opportunity for Bothell. Like to see, uh, like to see some ball movement here. Uh, GP likes to fly around on defense and, and disrupt a lot of passing lanes, getting on hands so that your your feeders don't have freedom to be able to move the ball. And I'd like to see Bothell be able to move it quickly. You got that pole on offense again. Here we go. Penalties, penalties, penalties will always be a killer for a team, and it's an opportunity for Bothell to really start to hop into the driver's seat. Holding onto it is Dylan Kynaston. An errant pass reaching for it. Cordero tied up with Cecil, and it's scooped up, and coming the other way come the Grizzlies with a rush. Protecting the ball very far in front of him is Aiden Carroll. He dishes it over to his right, finds Torben Agard. 
Agard around behind the net, reaching for it. Bloom, he settles things down behind the cage. We'll see if Bothell presses out here. With the man advantage, they have the opportunity to press out, but they look comfortable enough to just sit into their zone and kill off, let Glacier Peak kill off this penalty. They're resting on their laurels a bit. A bit surprising when you have that opportunity. You're exactly right. I've been gilding, building some good momentum here in this second quarter so far. So uh, GP's doing a good job of slowing it down and, and kind of even in that flow out. And if they can punch one in here on this six-on-six -six possession, it could start to swing the other way. Mason Wheeler finds Voltsberger, a pair of 20-goal scorers this season. They work it down around behind the net. 6.45 remaining here in the second quarter. Stepping forward is Jensen from behind the net. He finds a man, a shot that's blocked. And a loose ball over in the far corner. That'll trickle out of bounds. And possession will remain on this end. That's going to be there again. Uh, I'd like to see GP continue to push through X and draw those adjacent defenders for those wing shots. You see Aiden Moore scored one earlier, and, uh, and you see a shot right there. Here's a step up as a man cutting through the heart of the zone. Couldn't quite find the twine of his stick. It is Voltsberger over to his right. Finds the left-handed Moore around behind, stepping forward with an open lane, a rising shot that rockets wide of the net and flails well out of bounds. I've got a flag down. I can't tell what that is. It looks like he gave an illegal body check, but I can't tell. Yeah, unsure. As a, we, we did see some laundry get picked up off the turf there, and Austin Bloom felt perhaps that he was interfered with in that zone as he was having a conversation with the folks in stripes. <laughs> Nevertheless, it will be Aiden Moore. Over to his right, he finds Austin Bloom around behind the end line. <laughs> Stepping forward, around behind again. Here's Wheeler. Quick passing, finding the cut man in, and Mason Wheeler has knocked out of his stick. Picked right back up by Agard. Agard, the sophomore, works it out again to Jensen. Finagles it to Votesberger, looking for the shot that's wide of the net and out of reach of Agard. But possession still to the Grizzlies as they have really started to push back against the Cougars here in this possession. You can start to feel it swing a little bit with this man up. Imagine what this place is going to sound like if one of them finds the back of the net. Jensen over to his right, still trying to find that opening. The Cougars so far bending but not breaking. As stepping forward is Jensen. He finds an open man, and that shot just missed the net off the stick of Aiden Moore. Ooh, boy, he wanted that one. That's his sweet spot right there. He almost found number two. And stepping right back up with it is Austin Bloom. Bloom's best this season is five goals in a game. He gets it out towards uh, a man no in Agard. No backup there. It's a turnover. We're going to clear the ball right as the penalty releases, so we're going to have an even clear. <laughs> and finally, the Cougars are able to get even a touch of the ball and a sniff of possession. Under five minutes to play here in the second quarter, it is two to one in favor of the Glacier Peak High School Grizzlies. Going up against the Cougars, who finished the season 11-7-0, 4-6-0 in league play. As we get a tie-up over by the Glacier Peak bench area. It's a great ride. Again, they double on the ride. They force him to the sideline. They pinch his angle, and they force a turnover. It's a great double and a great ride for GP. Right after Coach Cartwright was probably just feeling a sigh of relief after <laughs> all those shots and no goals, and he's finally getting a clear. And then he turns it over on the clear, and we're back on defense. How short-lived that can be. I tell you what, being down at field level before the game, though, this is exactly the kind of intensity on the ball that you would expect from Glacier Peak. They came hungry to this one. Yeah, they like to make you feel uncomfortable early and, and make you create some, of your own, some turnovers by yourself without needing to take it away from you. Jensen, the captain, gets it out towards Moore. Have a shooter here. Working their way around. There's a shot that's fought off by McAuliffe. And Bryce McAuliffe remains steadfast. He was a big reason why the Bothell High School Cougars had a four-game win streak heading into the last game of the regular season before a loss at Mount Si finally ended that. He's won four of his last five starts as there's a bouncer, and it finds its way over his stick, and the Grizzlies score. It is DJ Votesberger. 
You know, DJ's had that shot a couple times in these last two, two or three possessions. I think that's his second or third shot from that spot. So it was only a matter of time. You keep giving him that look, he's gonna bang it home at some point. Austin Bloom will get the primary helper on Votesberger's goal. Votesberger in the regular season had himself 22 such tallies, including seven in league play. And for DJ Votesberger, a huge goal to restore a multi-goal advantage here for Glacier Peak. 3.56 remaining, and as they were heading a man up, they found themselves pushed into their own end, and now it's an opportunity here to try to respond here for Bothell. And you can see here's GP heavy on the faceoff guy. They're doubling right away. They said, we're not gonna be able to win the clamp, then we're gonna double off that faceoff and see if we can create some turnovers that way. So if you are the Cougars, you recognize that that's happening, what support can you try to provide that faceoff man? Well, if you're, if you're doubling from some from uh, another player, that means that somebody's open. So you have your two wing players. I'd like to see Caden Brammer be able to get, I understand he, he's a face-off guy that wins it to himself, but he needs to be able to use his wings as outlets to be able to transition the ball to offense instead of him just working so hard. I always like to tell my players, try to work smarter, not harder. And that's a great example of that. And they had clean possession of the ball, but a quick interception. It's rolling onto the ground. It will be scooped and settled for a moment by the Cougars. A heavy hit levels a man, and racing up the other way come the Grizzlies. Stepping forward, finding an attackman on the right side. Holding onto it is Agar. Works it around behind to Austin Bloom. And just like that, in a flash, the Grizzlies are able to get possession back so quickly. Yeah, and because Bothell's running their zone, they're not out pressuring at all. So GP can really determine how fast or slow this game goes. They can really control the flow, especially because they've had a very efficient, clear game this game, and their riding has created so many second possessions. So when you're executing in between the boxes on your rides and your clears, you're going to be able to double up your offensive possessions, especially when... Uh, Bothell's going to sit back and let you control that time as they kill this penalty here to now play six on six. Votesberger and Aiden Moore hop out onto the field after a quick change there for the Grizzlies. Moore around down low, a step up in front, a shot, and a denied what on a the save. line. What a save. What a stop there by Bryce McAuliffe, who, despite being on the wrong side of the scoreboard, has been putting on a clinic in net. Splits the double team. Stepping forward and racing ahead, here comes Broden Hampson. Hampson protecting with the long stick, stepping forward on the right side. Hampson around behind, a pass that skips on by the midfielder. And down the length of the field, and we'll get a stop with 158 remaining here in the second quarter. It's a heartbreaker for Bothell again. You get the chance to clear it, and then you turn it over the second you get there. Up into the air, and there's a shot that's just wired wide there off the stick of Votesberger again. And the Grizzlies will remain on the attack there. Twirling his stick confidently as Jensen as he steps up on a defender, searching for a passing lane. He flicks it behind the net at the far post, working out to the perimeter, a rising shot by Bloom sends it high and out. Possession still to the Grizzlies. They look for those one-timers from that diagonal angle. It's either Bloom on one side or Moore on the other. Yeah, and the way that Bothell's zone is, is that as that player at X looks to push up GLE, those bottom poles like to sink in and give up those wing shots. And that's why they've had, they're, they're catching it ready to shoot, and that's, that's just as important. A chopping check there by Ryder Jacobson. And Great who, timeout. We it's get a, a timeout. timeout. Timeout called here with 117 remaining in the second quarter, just as tempers were starting to flare a little bit. A nice aggressive play there by the senior Ryder Jacobson. We'll take a quick time out here. You are listening to STSPN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet, too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires.
Back at beautiful Glacier Peak Stadium here for the Grizzlies taking on the Cougars in boys lacrosse playoffs. Casey Bryant alongside Coach Dylan Hummel and Todd Elvig as it is 3-1 Grizzlies. The Grizzlies have really stepped on the gas pedal here in terms of offensive pressure. They are still only up by two, though, with only three to the back of the net. A big reason for that is Bryce McAuliffe, but you're starting to see them threaten more and more, Coach. Yeah, Glacier Peak's starting to figure out the zone a little bit. They're getting double the amount of shot attempts that they had in the first quarter. And uh, for me, it feels like a matter of time it, Bothell is trying not to break here as they're bending as much as possible. It certainly seems like they would want to ride out this final minute of the second quarter, try to make some adjustments at the half and come out firing more in the third. But here's an opportunity for the Grizzlies as they shake over to their right. Here's Wheeler low to high off the netting of the stick of McAuliffe. And there is another beautiful stop there by the senior. And you got the Bothell pull. Uh, I believe that's Ryder Jacobson chasing the stick a little bit. Wheeler does a great job of tucking it, bringing it back, and letting it fly. But Bryce is there to make another stop. Agar drops it for Jensen as Jensen finds more. There's a shot that tails well wide. You could see the movement on that kind of shot from this particular angle. That had a lot of tail on it. You know, Aiden Moore shot that shot for about four or five times this game. I'd love to see him change angles a little bit, maybe shoot that ball a little low. All of his shots so far have been up high, and I think that's a little bit easier. Oh, what a play here with the interception. A daring play there by McAuliffe, desperate to finally get the ball out of his zone, and he's able to clear it, albeit only for a moment as the Grizzlies get possession right back. Oh. And there's another clean interception racing up the other way comes Ryder Jacobson. Be big. Keep Jacobson stepping forward over to his right, low to high, a save made by Troxel. And the most exhilarating rush of the quarter for the Cougars comes with just 10 seconds left. Time runs out on Bothell. They are able to survive the second quarter only down three to one. What a tremendous offensive quarter there for the Grizzlies and a final second push is denied. Yeah, I, I thought there was going to be some excitement on one way or the other there, but uh, both defenses held Pat in transition there. And there is an opportunity now for Bothell to step into halftime, make the proper adjustments for Glacier Peak. They certainly have possession. It's a matter now of just trying to the direction finder. Can they wire it to the back of the net this time? There's a lot of shots that are just missing wide, just missing high. You talk about changing the angles. Is there anything else that you see from Glacier Peak that would even need tweaking? Uh, no, I think they just need to keep putting their pedal to the metal here and doing what they've been doing and just continue to do it, and but do it at a higher intensity where Bothell can either step in or step back. And if they step in, we'll see if they can match that. If they step out, Glacier Peak's going to be able to get what they want. Well, while we head into halftime here, we'll take a timeout ourselves here. And before we go, we would like to thank all of our broadcast sponsors here with STSPN, Fred's Rivertown Ale House, McDaniel's Do It Best, American Family Insurance, GNS Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, Adrenaline Fundraising, Gene Johnson Plumbing, the U.S. Navy, U.S. Marines, and U.S. Army, and, of course, a special thanks to the Washington State Lacrosse Boys and Girls for their support. Be sure to tune in for SDSPN's coverage of the Washington State Girls Championship on May 19th and the coverage of the Boys Championships on May 27th. We'll take a timeout here for Dylan Hummel and Todd Elvig. I'm Casey Bryant. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll have the second half. You're listening to STSPN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire.
Player of the game, senior libero, Lauren Riskin has control. Championship district tournaments, we have it here on STSPN. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires. Johnson are here and ready to help with our touch free service. Being clean and safe are at the top of our minds. We're using gloves, masks, shoe covers, and lots of hand sanitizer. Our software allows us to get your approval without any physical contact. We hope you don't need us, but if you do, we're ready. Gene Johnson, clean, on time, and professional. Not to the same extent, but it's, it's, it's much more running gun. But at the same time, you're trying to work along the walls, you're trying to force anyone to the outside, you're trying to clock. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. 
with us. The new generation. The next level. Sending it big. Oh, oh my goodness! In for a good run, let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this! To the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back, hard. I love it, I get the gang on you, you better pray for it, I put that thing on you, you ever pray with it, that's like... To the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us, to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. To the world's first. The world's best. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. SWIC is an acronym. Back at Glacier Peak Special High School Warfare for live coverage tournament. of high school playoff boys lacrosse. Bobble High School Cougars trailing the Glacier Peak High School Grizzlies 3-1 to one, heading into the second half. Casey Bryant alongside Coach Dylan Hummel and Todd Elvig here for STSBN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports presented by Les Schwab Tire. Now, Coach, in that, se in that first half, only three goals allowed for Bothell, but really possession was so one-sided in that first half. Coming out into the second half here, what immediately would you like to see from the Cougars? Well, I'd like to see Bothell care more about the clear from beginning to end. They work really hard at the beginning of the clear, and then as it gets into the middle of the field, things start to break down. And then, especially if they get the ball all the way to offense, once they get to the box, they kind of stop. And GP's been doubling and creating some turnovers there. I'd like to see Bothell get that all the way through X and kind of settle their offense. A fresh 12 minutes on the clock, and away we go here in the third quarter with Glacier Peak running from right to left on your screens, wearing their home whites. Currently leading on their home field here for playoffs, trying to extend their season as they are right back to work, picking up where they left off with possession of the ball and working it around behind the cage. It is Jensen with Bloom around behind the, behind the line. It is Kyler Jensen holding onto it. He finds Mason Wheeler. Wheeler, the junior, who doesn't have any points quite yet, but so much of the offense has flowed through him on this outside position. He's over there with Votesberger. Votesberger gets a screen set for him of sorts. They get it to Bloom, now to Jensen. Jensen trying to evade the defender, Kynaston, who's pressuring him. Now back out to the perimeter at the hash marks. Stepping forward. Bloom, near side. Around behind the net. Agard looking for an option. He finds one in Moore. Still cycling the ball around the outskirts of the offensive zone here as Mason Wheeler steps forward to his right. He finds Moore. Works it around behind to Agard. Agar to his left, Bloom. Surveying the field over to Moore. Moore's rising shot is turned aside. And there's McAuliffe again. McAuliffe with a long clear, picked up by Kynaston. And Bothell working their way up the field. There's the double on the ride. Bedeviled trying to get it into that half of things. Adam Troxel has not been tested nearly as much as Bryce McAuliffe through the first half of things. And now back to work come the Grizzlies with possession of the ball two minutes gone by here in the third quarter. It will be the Grizzlies getting a quick change, a very quick shift there for Alex Hendricks as things started to transition a bit defensively. And now they'll get their offensive big guns right back out onto the field. As you can see, the specialization there of Aiden Moore. As soon as it leaves that half, he's heading right back to the sideline, back out as the trigger man again. It is Bloom over to Votesberger, now to Moore once more. Moore has taken plenty of shots on net that have not missed by much. It is Bloom to Moore. That pass just hopped past his stick, and perhaps the sun playing in as a factor as he tried to field that one. It is starting to dip behind the hill that we have here at Glacier Peak. Stepping forward is Wheeler and hits in and out of the netting of his stick. He'll corral the ground ball. 
It is Wheeler over to his left, more the lefty. Finds Bloom with a lane, rising shot, and he scores. Austin Bloom with his second of the game, picking his corner, top shelf, far side. Yeah, I mean, if you don't step out on a guy that's shooting five yards above GLE from the hash marks, I mean, that is his favorite spot. We talked about it earlier. Loves to shoot off that wing. Uh, doesn't have a stick on his gloves at all. He's able to follow through and put it past him. I tell you what, from this particular vantage point that we have, it's pretty low to the field. You're right at center, and you can see that exact lane. It's, you could draw a straight line from the booth here to the goal scorer, Bloom, to the net. And it was that's the first time, really, the Red Seas parted right in front of him, and he had a unobstructed view towards the net. Yeah, you want the defender there to take a topside approach so that that shot, would fo his follow-through, would hit the defender there. You see the defender on the opposite side taking that underneath, just like you're saying, parting giving him that shot lane, basically. Bothell back to work. They now trail by three. It is the largest lead of the game for the Grizzlies. It is Caden Brammer with possession of the ball. Brammer swaps pots with Johnson. Johnson, not too many touches in this one for someone who has been relied on so heavily to be the main source of their offense. He has gotten the lion's share of it, 42 goals. Only one other player had more than 20 on the Cougars roster. Yeah, they got to move the ball here, you know. There's not a lot of not a lot of off-ball motion going on. Nobody really helping the midfielder, and you see him asking for help there. He's definitely gassed, and now he's got to run 100 yards back to try to play defense, and we'll see if GP can push this in transition as they've got numbers here, four on three. And look at Connor McCauley taunting his way down coast to coast, and he scores! Connor McCauley waves goodbye to Johnson on his way down the field. A spectacular single-handed effort. It's now 5-1 to one Grizzlies. That's a huge juice goal. You get a D midi that gets gets a one-on-one, -on -one, beats him. He's carrying the ball, throws a fake, freezes the point guy, takes it to the rack. High bouncers will go. How about the confidence on that play to not only give the Deion Sanders, you know, high-stepping down the sideline, but you also are able to cap it off yourself. Hey, you got to look good to feel good to play good. <laughs> For McCauley, 11 goals in the regular season, his first of the playoffs, and welcome to the postseason. It is showtime there for the junior. And back to work come the Grizzlies. Four minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Things have opened up a bit now for the Grizzlies, a 5-1 advantage. Yeah, they should be feeling really confident right now. Start of the second half, we're only four minutes into the second half. They've already put two up in the quarter, uh, and and they're making hustle plays between the boxes and creating second-chance opportunities, and, and they're very methodical on offense. You see them running the same little offense, same zone offense, and they're getting great looks just like that one. And on cue, there you go. You're starting to see them deconstruct the bottle defense as there is a jump shot there. Tyler Jensen, he loves that move. From that low wing there, that three and three, five and five island, he loves to isolate on that spot. He feels very comfortable. You see him rise up. He's had a couple goals like that this year, coming up the hash, looking to rise up over, create a different release point, and buries it in the back of the net. Jensen's first of the contest had 24 in the regular season, his first of the playoffs. And we talked a bit about the adjustments that Bothell would have to make into halftime. They've struggled so much to get possession. At this point now, you start to use the expression, it's getting late early. You have to start getting more pressure on the defense. Yeah, and if they're going to continue to sit in this zone, we talked about this at halftime, it's okay if they want to continue to stay with the principles of the concepts that they go over all the time. They feel the most comfortable in the zone, but they still have to kind of press out a little bit, make GP feel uncomfortable, don't let them sub three guys at a time and take advantage of those. Oh, lots of lots of flags down here. Flags up in the air as we have a kerfuffle over by the 20 yard line on the far side of your screen. 7-18 remaining here in the third quarter. A 6-1 Glacier Peak lead and it looks like they're about to get another man up here. Looks like we have a push on Bothell. At least one. Yep, just one here. GP's gonna go six on five here on the power play. And a huge opportunity to provide some even more separation for the Grizzlies as they try to sheathe the dagger even deeper into the chest of Bothell here, pulling away early in the third quarter. 
Bobo in dire need of a stop. Now we saw the effectiveness of the Grizzlies kill in the second quarter where they were able to stymie all offensive pressure and spend the bulk of it on that after the field. Bobo would certainly love to be able to weave that same kind of magic. Yeah, they almost kind of need to at this point, down by five with starting to lose hope a little bit here. You got a wheel to this right side, watch the X attackman. Oh, great job Bothell on that counter rotate to hold their spots. It is Hampson there that was marking on defense and Hampson using the long stick to poke it back towards the 30 yard line, spinning with it, it's Votesberger. That's why first time ground balls are so important right there. Penalties released, we're going six on six. More a bounce shot that goes wide of McAuliffe. He's still able to scoop it up. A big clear here for Bothell. They really need to get the ball on offense and settle down and play a little bit. And it will not go stick to stick as it is out of reach of Kai Nastin. It was Noah Saradellis with the errant fling upfield. And back to work go the Grizzlies. See the athleticism there in the middle of the field that GP possesses. And it's one of the reasons that they're winning those battles in between the boxes. They have such good athletes that they can really run the field, create those transition opportunities, and score some easy goals like they've had a couple this this game so far. More around behind to Jensen with Votesberger and Wheeler maintaining the top half of the zone as there's a low to high shot and what a snipe. There's Mason Wheeler, his first goal of the contest. That and is, the Grizzlies extend their lead. That is his bread and butter right there. Coming around, X ball's moving around to X. He's coming over the top. He catches that from that left side attackman and lets it fly low to high. That is his spot, his shot. And they're going to take a timeout here, and they're going to need it. Bothell in desperate need of a regroup here with 546 remaining in the third quarter. It is now 7-1 to one Grizzlies. We'll take a quick timeout ourselves. You are listening to STSPN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire. We at Gene Johnson are here and ready to help with our touch-free service. Being clean and safe are at the top of our minds. We're using gloves, masks, shoe covers, and lots of hand sanitizer. Our software allows us to get your approval without any physical contact. We hope you don't need us, but if you do, we're ready. Gene Johnson, clean, on time, and professional. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a constant vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires. Back at Glacier Peak High School for STSPN's presentation of Wesco Conference Sports presented by Les Schwab Tire. Casey Bryant alongside Dylan Hummel and Todd Elvig. 7-1 Grizzlies has four goals at the start of the third quarter have put the Grizzlies up big time. And coach, we were just talking, it's a matter of trying to get the ball upfield for Bothell right now. These clearances are killing them right now. Is it a matter of just trying to shorten the field a little bit with the passing targets? Is it trying to charge and take it up yourself? How can these clearances get better for Bobble? Well, I think it's easier if you work together. You know, it, we talked earlier about working smarter instead of harder. Somebody just taking the ball and running it up themselves, that's really hard work and not always the most effective. So I'd like to see them be able to pass the ball, but the problem is they've made some errant passes here at the beginning of the second half, and they've had some failed clears, and that's why GP's been on offense the whole time so far. And when you talk about failed passes, you look on the other side of things, and Glacier Peak is not making very many mistakes as they work it inside, and here's a chance for oh. Agard, and he scores. He got punished in the back for that one. He earned that goal. Call those tough guy goals. Anytime you score a goal right in front, then right a lot of bodies, a lot of traffic, you're getting pushed, maybe cross-checking the back a little bit. You earn those tough guy goals. That's a big goal there by Torben. 
And Agard was so huge for Glacier Peak down the stretch of this season. He's coming off of his best game against Lake Stevens in a victory back on May 30. He had three goals and four assists in that contest. And there he is working it down low, getting black and blue and earning himself a nice tally. 4.52 remaining in the third quarter. It is now 8-1 to one, Glacier Peak. Yeah, you see him moving Bryce, uh, Bryce Johnson to the wing here, trying to get trying to get their best player involved in the game a little bit more. You see 66 on the wing. A quick face-off victory there for Cade Brammer as he has Johnson open in between the hash marks. They'll elect to send it back to Ryder Jameson. And Bothell trying to stop the bleeding. Oh boy. Ball will be coughed up there at midfield and batted back by Glacier Peak and a panic move there for Jacobson. Trying to scoop it up is Johnson as he plows over his own man trying to get to the ball. It's picked up by Bothell, carried towards the net and flicked away by Glacier Peak out of danger. Airborne pass will be sent out of reach of their own man as it was Caden Skabil who couldn't quite corral possession over on the near sideline. And so Johnson will begin with it. It is Bryce Johnson, 42 goals this season for Bothell. Last year had 33 with 15 helpers to go along with it as a junior. Got the over the top sweep here. Takes a step forward trying to bully his way towards the net. Here comes the double. And the double team indeed, he splits it, he gets it out towards in between the hash marks. A weak pass over to his right, he looks for Tate Rayner. And a flag will be down and we'll get a stoppage as Johnson got nicked up in between the hash marks and we'll get a whistle with 345 remaining in the third. The slash there on 31. And so the Cougars with an opportunity to get themselves back on the scoreboard. Only one tally, it came all the way back in the first quarter. It came off the stick of Peter Cecil. And an opportunity now for open space which they have desperately needed. Well, Cecil's going to get another opportunity here. You see him in the top right-hand corner. If he gets his hands free, he is the one that's put it in the back of the net so far. Stepping forward and absolutely cannonballing a shot way wide of the net was Caden Brammer. And you see Johnson fumbling a bit with the pass over on the near side. It may be a case of just gripping the stick too tight, trying to do too much. He can, of course. It's, it's the old saying, as there's a bounce shot that's wide. You're not going to be able to make up a seven goal deficit in one shot. Right now, Bothell just needs to chip, chip, chip away. Yeah, I need, a, need a, at least a good quality shot on this possession to start to start to build on some momentum. Taking a step out to the far side, it is Cooper Pierce, the sophomore. 18 goals on the year. Bouncing ball, trying to steal it away as Roman Foster as he leans his way in. And it is Foster again, backhanding it up off the ground and rolled away by Kyler Jensen. He steps forward, finds a man on the doorstep, now across the way, and is denied by McAuliffe again. as he steps forward and read that rush perfectly. And we got a flag down here. The trail ref got a flag down. It looks like we're gonna have an offsides on Bothell. Too many guys forward. Seven guys playing defense there. And the Grizzlies again stymied on that odd man rush because of McAuliffe's positioning there. And how about that effort though, right at, at midfield? You see the work that Roman Foster, a senior, is doing. I mean, Foster is completely suffocating Bothell right now in this contest. Yeah, on that last man down possession, you know, he was he was playing some press. You know, we talked about this earlier about them making making the Bothell players feel uncomfortable. And despite Bothell being a man advantage there. They felt uncomfortable the whole time, and Foster was a big part of that. And he was there to be able to move the ball and that ground ball to the offense, and now they have a man-up advantage because of it. It's just a big, great hustle play. It is Agard, a spin move being thrown there by Jensen. He finds Voltsberg and sends it just off the shoulder there of McAuliffe. Oh, he's in some pain on that one. That one might have caught him in the leg, and he is hunched over. You are, you are correct. He's in a great deal of agony. He's about to see some more shots here coming quick off that failed clear. Here we go again. He is in a lot of pain there. He's trying to get some blood flow back in those arms. He took a hard shot there from, from DJ. 
And he is a gamer in every sense. He has appeared in 15 contests for Bavel this year. His backup netminder is Alistair Hennessy, appeared in two games, one decision. It was a victory. Had faced 12 shots the entire season, did Hennessy. So you can see the work that McAuliffe usually puts in for Bavel. So much of their success is, is credited to him and the work he's done. Yeah, and this, it, a lot of it is also designed around that zone. You know, he makes a lot of, a lot of saves, and I bet you a lot of them are a lot of easy saves outside shots, something that he feels real comfortable with, just like that one right there from 15 yards with DJ's offhand. You know, that counts just the same as a doorstep save, and, and Bryce will take every single one of them no matter what. And I tell you, it even looks like he's hobbling his way up the field. You see Alistair Hennessy on the sideline leaning forward a bit, perhaps getting a feel for the flow of the game should he need to go in for injury purposes. Stepping forward, trying to fight his way oh. through a defender. There's a heavy hit thrown there by Votesberger, and That's that knocks a man down. That'll draw a flag. That's a little high. They're going to they're gonna call that illegal body check, getting him up a little high in the head and neck area. You know, it if, if, if he hits him a little lower there, it's a clean hit. Uh, but because he gets him up in that head and neck area, they're going to err on the side of caution and player safety all the time. So. Now I tell you who loves the black and blue style of play is our producer today, Todd Elvig. We have talked frequently, both on camera and off, about how much he loves that bruising style of play. Todd, you must be loving this, huh? <laughs> hey, we, we like that. From a defensive standpoint, you, you have to have a little bit of violence. You know, you got to make them feel uncomfortable. And GP's done a great job about that to, uh, to bothle this game, making them feel uncomfortable. Final minute of play here in the third quarter. Eight to one Grizzlies, but the Cougars holding on to it with a lane to the net and they'll look to fire and it misses the mark by quite a significant margin as Brammer sent it well wide of that far post. Well, he's got a two on one there in that with number 12 uh, against, against number 22 from GP. Love to see a little draw and dump action there instead of that shot. There's Johnson with a low to high. That misses the mark by a bit. Again, possession still to Bothell. 39.8 seconds left. And you mentioned there Tate Rayner, who was another skilled goal scorer there for Bothell. Rayner, 21 tallies on the year. He, too, has not really seen too much action with possession of the ball. Oh, and then he's a, he's a player where if they are 0-4 in games, or 0-6 in games that uh, he only has four goals in those six losses, but... In all their other wins, he has 27 points. So if he can get if he can get on the board here, you know they kind of go as he goes sometimes. There's a long shot that's turned aside and a nice netting save there by Troxel. Short time here. Scooped up, final seconds ticking away of the third quarter. Possession to the Grizzlies. Here comes Jensen with one last rush. Two seconds. He's got to let it go. Bothell got away with one. They have too many guys on the field right now, but the refs didn't see it. And so they will slink their way into this third intermission as the Grizzlies have taken a commanding 8-1 lead thanks to five goals scored in the third quarter, all from different goal scorers. And we will take a quick timeout as we prep ourselves for the fourth. The Grizzlies in prime position here in the postseason. You are listening to STSPN's presentation of West Coast Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're fighting for each other. This is Rich Doctor requesting immediate contact. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else on the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. It's like a loot machine. All around town, trying to get it down. It's like a loot machine.
back at Glacier Peak High School Stadium here for the Bothell High School Cougars taking on the Grizzlies in the postseason for SDSBN's presentation of West Coast Conference Sports presented by Les Schwab Tire. Casey Bryan's back with Coach Dylan Hummel and Todd Elvig. And the Grizzlies scored five times in the third quarter to take an 8-1 lead. And in the intermission, Coach, we had ourselves a couple of flags thrown. Yeah, we got another stick violation on GP. This time it's on Kyler Jensen. Looks like his pocket's a little too deep. So he'll sit in the sin bin for the next two minutes. Unreleasable penalty. It's a really big opportunity for Bothell. If they score healed, they'll still have a man up on the faceoff. And Caden Brammer's been great at the faceoff X. So they've got a couple opportunities here if they if they can push this pretty quick and not turn the ball over. You see GP pressing out, forcing them to try to beat them with stick work. And working quick seems to be the name of the game there because Bothell right now has been very deliberate in their pacing. They haven't gotten a ton of looks towards the opposing netminder, if only just by virtue of pressure like this or just taking their sweet time. A good job there by Brammer to try to maintain possession of the ball as he was forced down onto the turf. Looks like we're staying Bothell ball. Maybe a loose ball hold there. It is still Caden Brammer, the freshman with possession. Works it to Johnson. Johnson snaps it down low. It's out of reach of most everyone. Settled by Cooper Pierce. Little Pierce, the sophomore. Stuff in, try at the near post. They score. <laughs> Cooper Pierce gets the Cougars their second tally of the game. And you mentioned they needed a quick one, and they got it. Yeah, you got a great little draw and dump there from Cecil Peter. Um, number 15, he scored a goal earlier. And here you see him wind up, draw that bottom defender, and then throw it to where the slide came from. You've got the offensive player following, trying to get to the front of the cage, and scores a goal there to get Bothell on the board. First goal in a while, so it's got to feel pretty good here. Man up face off, you got a free wing here. It comes 45 seconds in, but look out. Here come the other way, the Grizzlies. What a face-off victory, a huge one there for Pierce Steele. And a timeout called. It's a great timeout for Rex Road, saving a possession there. Steele in the face-off with that ground ball man down, and now you're going to save possession of the ball here. Quite literally, his last name is Steele. So you're <laughs> stealing the face-off. There you go. I like that. Right in the headlines already. I love it. I love it. <laughs> While they take a timeout on the field, we'll take a timeout as well. You are listening to STSBN's presentation of West Coast Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire. Back at Glacier Peak High School Stadium for live coverage of SDSB as in presentation of West Coast Conference Sports presented by Les Schwab Tire, Casey Bryant, Coach Dylan Hummel, Todd Elvig. Just 53 seconds gone by in the fourth quarter. Bothell got a goal with a man up, but with possession now are the Glacier Peak Grizzlies as a big faceoff victory by Pierce Steele has led to this sequence now for Glacier Peak, and what a momentous kill this is here with a minute still remaining on the penalty. And here you're gonna see the athletes that GP have as DJ's killing this penalty, running in a big circle here, and no, realistically, nobody's really catching him. And you can see Bobble's head coach, Jacob Cartwright, trying to gesticulate, saying to get on him. But right now, DJ Votesberger just running circles around the defenders. He's still got possession. He'll trot his way up the right side. No real interest in taking a look towards the net. And he's just keeping it away, and why not? He finally lets it go, and he finds a nice receptor in Torben Agard. Yeah, Bothell's really got to lock off these adjacents so that Glacier Peak can't just pass the ball around to the next guy. You have a man advantage and you're allowing every single offensive player for GP 
to touch the ball, and they have fresh legs to run in circles. As Bothell has number four, who's been chasing the ball the entire time, and now you have a player go down with a cramp. And holding on to their shin, yes indeed, that'll lead to a stoppage just as the penalty was expiring. Ryder Jacobson is down. Yes indeed, that is number one, Ryder Jacobson, a senior for the Bothell High School Cougars. A huge part of their midfield. One of the more consistent ground ball getters on that squad. And the speed of Glacier Peak and the sheer tenacity, use the word athleticism, it, it just looks like a track meet right now. They're just running laps around the offensive zone. Yeah, and when you're a man down like that, you know, you're really just stalling until uh, your, your six player can exit the box. And, and despite another stick infraction on GP, they've now killed off another penalty. Uh, and, and that's been a killer for Bothell. And back to work, cycling the ball into the offensive end come the Grizzlies, as it is Kyler Jensen working it around behind. They find more, more slings it in between the hash marks. A bouncing shot is sent wide by Votesberger. Possession still to the Grizzlies as they got their man. They got Votesberger straight on against the netminder. Now stepping forward, they find a trigger man on the outside. Now over to Votesberger. Votesberger waiting, holding, finding more. Over to his right, Wheeler, who for a change is down low by the goal line. At the far post, holding onto it are the Grizzlies, evading a defender. Out to Wheeler, stepping forward. They find more, looks to his left. There's a shot that's turned aside. No, getting a big piece of it was McAuliffe, but it finds its way to the back of the net. What a release there by Austin Bloom. And for Bloom, that's a hat trick. Yeah, he is uh, he's a great shooter from that side. He catches that loaded. He spends no extra time with the ball in his stick. He catches it into his windup and lets it fly before the defense can disrupt anything. And it is just cyclical right now for Glacier Peak. They're able to get it over to the side, then to that point area, then right to the middle. It's just working, working, working. And if it doesn't succeed the first time, they get the ball right back. Yeah, they've been doing a great job of maintaining their spacing uh, as to not collapse too much against this zone. And they're able to have their hands free and move the ball freely around the perimeter. So for Austin Bloom, who led the team with 28 tallies in the regular season. He picks up a playoff hat trick. He had six of them in the regular season. And this has been quite the growth that we have seen from Bloom. He had 16 goals last year and 13 appearances as a sophomore. And when you've got the touch, you've got the touch. And he's someone that they'll continue to grow and build around next season, I'm sure. Yeah, he definitely took a, took a big jump from last year to this year. He moved into a more pivotal role in their offense. And he's rewarded them by you know, leading the team in goals. 8.35 remaining in regulation. It is now 9-2 to Glacier Peak, and they are still controlling possession. As there's Bloom again, he finds his way to Votesberger. It has been the same personnel that has run the Cougars ragged in the offensive side of things. Stepping forward, Jensen. He finds more, fakes a shot, now gets it between the hash marks. There's a riser, and they score. It is Mason Wheeler with his second of the contest, 10-2. And now they're just picking them apart. This round two for Wheeler, same spot, same shot, same result. Catches it off that wheel, ball coming from that X push, swinging around to Aiden Moore, who moves that one more. Wheeler catches it loaded, lets it fly, drops the hands, brings it back upstairs. Top cheddar. And you talk about how momentum can flow and how lacrosse is a game of runs. Bothell gets one back, it's eight to two. You feel like, okay, if we can get one or two more, then we can start to really make them at least feel something. Those two seem like huge pushback end all goals. Yeah, start of the second half, uh, GP came out hot. They scored those two goals early and uh, they really haven't looked back. They've built off the momentum that they created for themselves. And, uh, and that's why, largely why they have a 10 to two commanding lead. Caden Brammer holding onto it on the near sideline, trying a no-look pass for Johnson. And this will be a turnover for Bothell. I tell you what, if you were to have a clock on who had the ball on their stick for the longest for Bothell, it would be Brammer, I think, by a long shot. It definitely would. And, and that's also turned into some turnovers. Uh, some of it 
you know, being self-inflicted where a pass like that, where he makes a low percentage look, or you see earlier in the last quarter, he had the ball in the, in the near side bottom corner and nobody was really helping him and he ended up turning the ball over. Uh, so it's a little bit of both, uh, a little bit of, a little bit of freshman decision making, uh, but also uh, Bothell's offense just doesn't seem to ever find their rhythm. There's a shot that goes off the post as Bloom went hunt, excuse me, that was Jensen that was hunting for one. And you say it's, it's valuable experience that he's getting. He's being thrown into a massive role is, is Brammer in this situation. And you are absolutely right in that he's just not getting a ton of support on the ball side. He's getting doubled. He's getting pushed around. There's just not a lot there. There's a backdoor pass. And what a setup as Torben Agard is able to find the back of the net for his second of the game. And they had McAuliffe turning every which way but the near side post. And McAuliffe is still trying to work out that right leg. And that is just pretty lacrosse. You had three or four players touch the ball in a two second span. And, and nobody held the ball longer than one cradle right there. And you get an easy goal if you move the ball like that against a zone. Agard with a wide open net in front of him. And so the second of the game for Torben Agard. He has the third different multi-goal performance out of the Grizzlies tonight. It's the second time GP's been called for laying on the faceoff guy for Bothell. Uh, once that Bothell player is winning that clamp, the GP faceoff guy is kind of leaning over on top of him, not allowing him to get up, and that's why we're getting those illegal procedures. And Bothell's won the last two faceoff. I tell you, regardless of the infractions, they have not let it affect them at all. As there's a nice shot there by Adam, excuse me, a nice save there by Adam Troxel. And with possession, taking it up a step, finding Kynaston. Lowering his shoulder, trying to get around a defender. He sends it behind the net, but no one is open. Possession will remain to Bothell. with 6.15 remaining in regulation time. Yeah, you got to go fast here. You, you need a goal here pretty quick if you want any type of comeback here. You've been winning a lot at the faceoff X, so there is opportunities to play make it, take it. But you really got to turn it on here, and you see that sense of urgency here in this possession from Bothell as they've gotten off a couple shots and uh, and a couple hitting some cutters here. Ball fumbled by Bothell and possession will go to Glacier Peak. You're starting to see some Bothell players get some time out on the field, perhaps trying to spell some other players, get them a rest, get them an opportunity as Isaac Rocha, who was out there, number 16, took a shift quickly back towards the sideline. A sophomore for the Cougars who has not seen too much time and will have an injury timeout as we have a Grizzly down on the far side of the field, 545 remaining with 11-2 lead in favor of Glacier Peak. It looks like Roman Foster was coming up a little, a little gimpy off of that last uh, ground ball and he threw that outlet pass kind of on one leg. Hopefully it's just, just a cramp here as we saw with Spider Jacobson just a little bit ago. Well, this is something that you start to factor in. This is what the first warm weekend that we've had here in the PNW, and and how long since probably last September, and it's starting to take a toll. You you say it play, it does play into your hydration, your preparation for this whole weekend. Absolutely, and and on top of that, you know, these kids they practice every single day, or they've got a game, uh, and we're at the end of the season here, so there's some there's some mileage that's been built up since you know since March had started at the beginning of the season, and you know, as we're hitting into the playoffs, sometimes the best ability is availability, as you see that a lot in major pro sports. If if your superstars are injured, that really takes a toll. So uh, I hope, hopefully, this isn't anything bad here. Has uh, Foster's a really big part of this this defense, and he's having a very difficult time getting up as his leg is being worked out and straightened. He will now be helped up to his feet. Roman Foster, a senior, played in 13 regular season games for Glacier Peak and has been one of the biggest stalwarts for the Grizzlies all evening on defense. He's been a big reason why guys like Rayner, guys like Johnson have not found the back of the net. At this point now, the Grizzlies have built up enough of a cushion to where his presence is not necessarily as essential, but all the same, you hope for the long-term health, of course. Yeah, definitely. You know, you got the next round coming up pretty soon, and 
you know, if GP's looking, if they can, if they can make it all the way, you know, the state championship's really just two weeks away from now. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it's nothing too serious and he's ready to get back out on the field pretty quick. You can catch live coverage of the Washington State Championships right here on STSPN's YouTube channel. Be sure to catch the girls' championship on May 19th and the boys' championships on May 27th. Be sure to subscribe to the Snohomish Times Sports Network today. And be sure to follow at Snohomish Sports on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. 520 remaining here. As with it is Wheeler. Wheeler hunting for a hat trick, and he gets it. Mason Wheeler is third of the game. It's 12-2 Grizzlies. And not just his third of the game, but his third of the game from the same spot. Same shot, dropping those hands, stick side high, three times in a row, three result. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And at this point, you can see Bothell just standing still a bit in their own zone. Ryder Jacobson right now with his arms around some of his fellow defenders. And it looks like one of them will have to be helped off the field. And that's a bummer because Ryder is a senior, so you know, for, for forever he's going to be thinking about the last game that he played. I know I still think about the last game I played, and it's tough to think like, ah, I ended the game, and I, I couldn't, I had a hard time finishing it because I was cramping up. At the same time, if you were to flip side that and look at it glass half full, you can say you left everything out on the field. Absolutely, and that's all you can ask for, especially, you know, after four years of high school lacrosse. You know, you want to be able to say I left it all out there. Make him rip the jersey off your back, right? As making his way upfield, a big heavy hit. Knocked down was Pierce Steele, as that was quite the lumber laid there by Jack Choppa. Haven't heard his name called too much in this one, but the name sounds a bit like a lumberjack, and there he is felling a man there in front. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have an illegal body check, it looks like, waiting for the ref to give me some hand motions as they talk about it a little bit. It will, in fact, be Choppa who will incur the infraction. If you're going to get limited time on the field, you at least want to make sure that your impact is felt, and there he is trying to make it. He'll at least remember it, you know. <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, you know, we kind of had a tough game, but he's going to remember that hit for sure. He's going to be telling all his buddies about it. Well, he is he's only a freshman, too. You want to show your coach, if you spent most of the season on junior varsity, hey, this is what I can do. This is what I can bring to the table. And you actually see that out of the last couple possessions here. Uh, some of these newer guys coming in on the offensive and defensive side for Bothell. Oh, they There's another like flag that was there. being thrown there as Voltsberger was trying to make his way to the net. Got another one. And penalties are starting to pile up with the game close to out of reach. A 10-goal lead here for the Grizzlies with 446 remaining in regulation. Another Bothell Cougar will make their way towards the sin bin. It looks like this will be an illegal body check against number 27, Noah Serradellis, a sophomore. And an illegal body check could be a number of different reasonings. It could be, you know, we're in hockey, you know, they kind of drop the shoulder and hit him with that free shoulder. That would be an illegal body check in lacrosse. Uh, a hit up a little high in that head and neck area we talked about earlier would be considered a, an illegal body check. So uh, a little bit of gray area there for those at home. Uh, they may be a little confused. Four and a half to go in regulation as Glacier Peak continues their avalanche of offense as here's Moore on the near side working it over to Bloom who's got himself a hat trick already. Does he have a fourth in him? Jensen in between the hash marks. He finds Wheeler to his left. There's a rising shot by Votesberger and that one's snatched out of the air by McAuliffe who despite 12 goals allowed has certainly put up a memorable performance in what could very well be his last contest. Stepping forward with possession, holding onto it is Reed Morgan, one of the captains, and Morgan takes a heavy check and coughs up the ball, and it'll be taken by the Grizzlies. Here's an open lane. Bloom, just him and the netminder. Over to his left, a bounce pass will be fielded by Agard. In between the hash marks, Wheeler retreating. Pursued aggressively by Broden Hampson. 3.45 to go in regulation. Moore finds its way over to Wheeler, who himself has a hat trick. Over to Moore, stepping forward with a beleaguered defender in front of him as taking a step up is Reed Morgan. 
Curling with possession of the ball is Jensen behind the net. Trying to wait out McAuliffe, he sends it wide. And possession remains in the hands of the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. Yeah, gonna get some new guys, some burn here. As, uh, as Bloom exits the ball game, probably his last minutes here. Wheeler down low to the near post, a stuff and try by Agard, and he scores. And there's a hat trick for Torben Agard. Three different hat tricks for the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. 3.03 remaining in regulation, it's now 13 to two. It may have taken them a little bit, but once GP figured out Bothell's zone, it's, it's been methodical since then, and, and that's why you've seen them you know, pour it on here in the second half. And we talked about it heading into halftime, really, is that you're, you're content with the possession, but it's the execution that really wasn't there for Glacier Peak. Now the execution is starting to come through. Yeah, they're starting to value their possessions a little bit more. They're not just taking the first shot that they get. Uh, and, and you can see the higher percentage looks are increasing because they're being unselfish, they're moving the ball, and they're looking for the great shot rather than just the good shots. Taking a step up are the Bothell Cougars. As hanging onto it is Caden Brammer. Brammer taking it himself to the net. And declined by Troxel. And there's Brammer again trying to do it himself, wrapping around behind the net. There's a low, heavy hit. Choppa bore the brunt of that Pierce steel hit. It's like a loose ball hold on Bothell. And back to the Grizzlies once more. And we'll see if they're just going to be content to just kind of run out the rest of this game or if they got one more offensive possession in them or not. Well, you're starting to see Glacier Peak trot out a few players that have not seen a ton of time as you see Kai Brooks, the freshman, out right now setting a pick there for Vaultsberger. Over to the left, it is Carter Langabeer. Kai's gonna be a name to see over the next couple of years. He's a great athlete uh, and he's already been contributing at the varsity level just as, uh, just as a freshman. He has five goals in seven games this season. He hasn't played for the Glacier Peak Grizzlies or excuse me, he did not play before April 11th, so a late call up, and there's a rising shot and they score. And now we get some pushing and shoving. Aiden Moore finds the back of the net despite some extracurriculars with Noah Saradellis, 14 to two. See Bothell's frustration starting to seep through here as this fourth quarter's gone on. A couple extracurriculars in the second half. Uh, you see a late hit on that one. A little unnecessary, but a guy that's looking to take his frustration out on somebody. And so for Aiden Moore, it is his second goal of the contest. He scored the first goal way back in the first quarter. Now he's got the 14th. 1.44 remaining in regulation time as the Grizzlies will be cruising their way into the next round here of the playoffs. And what has been turned into a thorough drubbing here in the second half. 11 goals in the second half alone for the Grizzlies to the Cougars one. Stepping forward, scooping the ball off the turf is Wheeler. He'll step up on the left side. Wheeler has more on the right. Deliberately hanging on with only 90 ticks of the clock, separating the Grizzlies from advancement in the playoffs. As the Cougars will wind down what remains of their season barring a miraculous comeback. The likes of which probably has not been seen in some time. Oh, I'd say this one's in the bag at this point. <laughs> oh, we got a hidden ball trick maybe. Having some fun with it at the end of the game here. Jensen for more, down low for Bloom. And one. Agard has certainly had himself. There's a few that you could certainly name. Agard, Bloom, Jensen. I don't know, Coach, who has caught your eye here for Glacier Peak? You know, honestly, it's it's tough to give it to one one person. I think somebody on defense deserves the player of the game. I mean, we've we've only had two two goals here, and uh, and Troxel's had he's had some good saves, but uh, a lot of them have been you know contested shots 
somebody's on his gloves. I mean, here you see a double team. I mean, I'd say the whole defense has been really good, specifically. Uh, looks like that's an outside shot. Yeah, off the outside of the net, 20 seconds remaining. Up on the far sideline, one last rush here for the Grizzlies. A ball up in the air. And as time ticks away, the Glacier Peak High School Grizzlies will be making their way into the next round of the playoffs. A 14-2 victory. Adam Troxel stands tall in net. Three different hat tricks. And the Grizzlies make their way ahead of Tahoma and Eastlake. Player of the game we'll talk to a little bit later will be Torben Agard, number 17 of Glacier Peak High School, who was a star on both sides of the ball. And you talked about, in a 14-2 game, yes, a lot of people will talk about the offense, the hat tricks, the multi-goal outings. But you are right, to hold the team to only two goals, when they have the talent that they have, that's impressive. Yeah, GP's defense was swarming all game. Uh, you know, they, they were physical anywhere, anytime the ball got around the crease. And they were great on the ground balls once they got them there. And then their clearing was exceptional. So when you tack on aggressive defense, great on ground balls, and then clearing the ball, and then valuing and having great possessions on offense, that's a really good, complete team win. 14 to two, your final Glacier Peak, moving on to the next round. When we come back, we'll take a quick timeout, and when we do come back, we will have a conversation with Torben Agard on the game that was. So stay tuned for the presentation of our player of the game. You are listening to STSPN's presentation of West Coast Conference Sports, presented by Les Schwab Tire. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires. Daniels Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniels the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniels and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniels. Come with us, the new generation, the next level, sending it big. In for a good run, let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this! 
to the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back, hard. To the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us, to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. To the world's first. The world's best. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Bullseye, this is Witch Doctor, requesting immediate contact. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. Hey Celeste Flop Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths, and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. During our spring tire sale, we watch out for your wallet too. Save up to $175 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires. Welcome back to Glacier Peak High School Stadium here. Casey Bryant alongside Coach Dylan Hummel and our player of the game from Glacier Peak High School, High School Torben Agard. Torben, how does it feel to be moving on here in the postseason? What's the vibe like after a win like that? Yeah, it's super good because uh, it's our first playoff win, uh, like I think ever, so it feels super good, especially since we scored so much. Uh, yeah, everyone's super excited. So. Coach, I understand that there was there was a lot that they were going through over the course of that game, and they were able to penetrate really well. 
Yeah, what did you guys think you found so much success against their zone defense? What was what were some of the looks that, that made it so much easier in that second half compared to that first half? Yeah, so we watched some film, and then our coach drew up an offense. So their crease guy pops out, and then the wing guy has to fill in, so it leaves a bunch of open space and skip lanes. And, uh, like, if you draw someone, we're just looking to draw and dump and then look for open shot. So. And you get yourself a hat trick out of the deal. Yeah. So clearly yeah. whatever was drawn up was working in your beneficiary. Yeah. How does it feel to be able to walk away from this game, not only with a playoff win, but personally with three goals? Uh, it feels super good. Uh, you know, I was on JV last year, and it's just nice to be on varsity and find success and stuff. Well, you've been, uh, able, to <laughs> you've been yeah. able to contribute in such a big way. We'll get you hooked up here with some player yeah. of the game swag. Torben, Woo! good catch. We've got you. A player of the game t-shirt. Nice. Congratulations to you and a keychain, a lanyard for you as well. Torben, congratulations Thank you. to you. Thanks Thank so you. much for joining us here in the booth. We appreciate it. Thank you. And good luck the rest of the way. We'll get a quick pick for you. Smile for the camera. Awesome. Thank you so much, buddy. Yeah. We appreciate it. I'll Thank take you. I'll take your headset from you. Thank you so much, pal. And that'll just about wrap things up here from Glacier Peak High School. A special thanks to Todd Elvig. For Coach Dylan Hummel, I'm Casey Bryant. Have a good night.